Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. Are you a beginner photographer? Have you just picked up your first digital SLR or have you had one for a while but you're not happy with the results? Well, I've created my most comprehensive video to date. It is a three hour long video guide that's going to help you go above and beyond auto. I wish I had a guide like this 18 years ago when I started as a photographer. It would have given me the ability to save months, if not years of time, trying to figure all of this out on my own. So please allow myself and this guide to be your mentor. What are we going to cover in this guide? We're going to hit the fundamentals of photography, the type of information that you're going to take with you throughout your whole career as a photographer. We're going to hit things like what is the exposure triangle? What do I do if my picture is over or underexposed? How do I get tack sharp images? What focus mode should I use? What metering mode should I use? And what's a good composition? We're going to hit that and much, much more. So this guide is going to give you the confidence to unlock the power of your digital SLR. It's the closest you can get to being at one of my boot camps without actually being there. So I'm not just going to sit there and tell you how to do things. I'm actually going to demonstrate it. You get to follow me on four photo shoots. You get to be there as my assistant pretty much when I make mistakes, but then I figure out what I did wrong and explain to you what I did and show you how I made the corrections. So if you would like to pick up this guide today, you can download it below. It's a digital download. That means you can watch it over and over again. And yeah, if you decide to pick it up today, I'm going to include a 20 minute long bonus video that's going to give you the five year plan, how to make money as a photographer and how to market yourself. So let's take a sneak peek inside this video guide. So you just heard me talk about f-stops, you heard me talk about how depth of field works and now the best way to, to show you how that really, really works is to do this right here with this frog who I've become uh, well acquainted to. But what does it actually look like when you get a picture at 1.8 versus a picture at 22? What's going on here? Well what's going on is that your depth of field is changing. A shallow depth of field is what you see when you're shooting at 1.8. It's very narrow. So your focus point or your, your, your area of focus is very small. As the numbers go up all the way here to 22, your focus is changing. So more things are going to be in focus from front to back. So that's important to keep in mind. So what we're doing here is I'm going to photograph the frog and I'm going to focus in on its eye at 1.8. And then I'm going to work my way all the way up to 22 so that you can see what's happening to the background. Then we're going to talk about it and figure out you know, the little subtleties that are going on. So right now I have the camera set to aperture priority. But aperture priority means that I am setting my aperture. I'm picking where I want it. And the camera is then going to select the shutter speed for a proper exposure. Let's shoot at 1.8. So I'm at 1.8 right now. I'm focused in on the frog's eye. Boom. That's 1.8. Let's take it to f 2.8. There she's a nice smile. Now I'm making sure, I almost did this here, I'm going to shoot it. There I cut her finger off and I saw it, so that's why I didn't shoot it initially. But now I'm recomposing, boom, I'm making sure that I have her finger in there and I do. So that is really sharp. Uh, you can see in the pictures that the background is nice and blown out. When we talk about blown out, it's compressed. So that's the point of using a, a piece of glass like this. And I'm probably going to switch to the bigger piece of glass, a 3028 in a few minutes, so that we can see how we can really compress the background, step away from the tree, and make a parking lot look really awesome. So we're going to come back to that in a couple seconds. Well, why don't you sit back on it? Which way do you want me to Just do? face that way, but just rest your tuchus on, on it. So now we're ready to photograph the swing here. I'm locking in on the tripod just so that I have a, 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 something that's not moving so that each image kind of stays similar. Right now I'm set to shutter priority and that means that I am setting the shutter speed and the camera is going to do the rest of the work to make sure that it's exposed properly. So I'm going to start at one tenth of a second. Remember how slow that was? You could hear the sound of how slow that was when we were uh, testing and letting you hear the different shutter speeds. Now let's see what happens when we move the swing and shoot it at a tenth of a second. So I'm going to try to capture the swing at the very bottom, boom, and as we look at the swing you can see that it's, it's kind of hard to see because it's actually blurring. 
it's blurring because the shutter is moving really slow and there is some motion to the swing. So we have to think, what do we need to do to freeze that swing that is moving? Let's try something a little faster, like 1 60th of a second. I hope you enjoyed that sneak peek inside this video guide and you can click down below to purchase it and don't forget if you pick it up now I will give you a 20 minute long bonus video that is packed full of amazing information. So thank you guys, Jared Poland, Frone.